Hello folks and welcome to my review of the Omen 17 inch laptop. Now this is a HP laptop from around 2019 and you might be questioning why am I reviewing it now? Well, these can probably be had for around 600 pounds at this stage and I'm just going to review whether or not the performance is up to spec for modern games uh, for that sort of price. Um, I'll also give an overview of tips and things that I think you might need to do uh, to get a system like this running at its best. Um, as you can see here, it's very slim, slightly dusty. Sorry, I just vacuumed and uh, kicks up dust onto everything. It's quite a thin machine and um, unfortunately things that are very thin tend to get very hot. So that's the first downside of this. However, this here is a nice metal construction, all aluminium. This part here gets really, really hot, but it's metal, so it does sort of eliminate the heat to a degree. It's got two fans on it and a huge heatsink assembly on the inside. Um, however, that still uh, struggles to deal with the Core i7-9750H. Now, you might be as well looking at this thinking throttle stop, what's that? Well, this is a piece of software that you'll probably need if you buy a laptop like this. The manufacturer won't tell you this, but you'll need something like this in order to uh, A, slow down the processor, and B, undervolt it, uh, because these things run hot. I mean, um, even here, as you can see, you do some light workloads and you get to 74 degrees. Now, if you're playing something like Doom Eternal, this can easily get to about 89, 90 degrees. Now, they're designed to run at that temperature, so they're not gonna break. Um, however, once you get above 90, uh, they start to heat up the surrounding electronics, uh, specifically in this area. <clears throat> and in doing so, that can cause the laptop to actually shut down in the hot summer weather. So you really need this piece of software. It's called Throttle Stop. And my settings, if you click on here, you can see my settings for everything, for the CPU core and whatnot, are set to minus 130, 111.3 millivolts. And then I've also limited the CPU to run at a maximum of 3.1 gigahertz. So let's click OK, get rid of that. So 3.1 gigahertz is actually pretty good for most games. Um, this is a six core CPU with hyper threading, so it's got 12 sort of virtual cores in a way. Um, and it actually runs perfectly fine at even lower frequencies. So this piece of software limits that. And uh, I know I've spent quite a while talking about it, but it really is pretty essential um, for this. Now, a lot of these laptops only come with a 512 gigabyte SSD. That's really not enough space um, for modern games. For example, Red Dead Redemption 2 will quite happily take up 220 gigabytes of space on your SSD. So it's worthwhile getting a SATA, or SATA, however you want to say it, uh, two terabyte SSD, which is what I've got in here, and that frees up some much needed space on the main one. Because if you overfill an SSD, if you fill it up to within 10% of its range, it actually slows right down and can cause issues with the longevity of it. So you really need, on a 500 gig one, uh, you really need to leave about, I don't know, 90 gigs probably, or 80 gigs spare, so that the system can run effectively and trim the heart, trim the SSD without any problems. Okay, so onto the graphics card now. This has a 1660 Ti mobile version, obviously, uh, that runs with six gigabytes of memory. So I'll minimize that. And you might be wondering, how does that run the games? Well, I'm not gonna run a ton of games because I'm gonna run one game and you'll see how well that works and that will give you an idea of it. So also the thermal paste that comes with these is not quite up to snuff. Um, so I got some special Cooler Master stuff. It's about 15 pound for a little tube. Um, you'll be able to repaste this probably 10, 15 times with what's in there as well as do other computers. So we're just going to load up Doom now, skip past all the intros. As you can see from the frame rate there, we've got 144 frames per second on Doom Eternal. And this is a 1080p monitor on this with 144 hertz refresh rate. So we're sitting perfectly at the refresh rate there. Uh, we're at mostly maximum settings, got adaptive vertical sync on. So um, that means um, 
when the frame rate doesn't match the refresh rate, it will actually uh, allow screen tearing, but right at the top of the screen where you don't really notice it. Um, got most of the settings on really, really high. Uh, except for textures, you can't have that on Ultra Nightmare because that goes over the six gigabytes of RAM that we have on the graphics card. But everything else you can see is set to Ultra Nightmare, except uh, ray tracing. Now, you can turn on ray tracing on this graphics card, um, but it really kills the frame rate um, because this actually doesn't have any ray tracing hardware built into it. So it's just running uh, basically in software. And it does work. And if you reduce the other settings, you can get close to 60 frames per second, um, but it's really not worth it um, for the extra visual flair, in my opinion. So you can see we're running 144 frames per second on there. As we look around, all looks good. So there's really no issues with the frame rate. Uh, if you get into really hectic scenes, you might drop a couple of frames maybe, um, but the adaptive sync and the adaptive resolution um, will drop down so you don't notice. Now this is such a hectic game that in all honesty, even if the resolution drops a little bit from its 1080p native, you don't really notice. Uh, perhaps a bit of softness around the gun, but otherwise you don't notice. Now, this game is a perfect example to show you how hot the CPU can get. As you can see there, just doing that little bit of gameplay, uh, not even for very long or very much, uh, increased the temperatures to 80 degrees. Now, the GPU temperature is quite stable. That doesn't really get all of that hot. It's, you can have it showed here. GPU is at 55. So the GPU really isn't um, too much of a problem. Um, but unfortunately, the CPU in this does get really hot. So I would recommend, if you wanted to buy one of these, to play games in 2023. I can highly recommend that you, A, stick some uh, different speakers on there. B, open it up. It's not that difficult. Um, it's a little bit time consuming, but it's not that difficult. There's a number of screws underneath and then it just unclips. And then it's quite easy to remove the heatsink assembly. And then you can actually replace the thermal paste on this and get it a good few degrees less. I don't use metal thermal paste or liquid metal because um, in a device like this, um, I don't feel able myself to prevent it from spilling onto other things. Uh, you can put foam around it or you can put nail varnish apparently will stop it running. Um, but as this cost me about 1200 pounds at the time, I really wasn't willing to take the risk on that. Please ignore all my silly stickers as well. Um, I'd also recommend a C as getting a little uh, stand-up base here with fans built into it. Um, it doesn't make much noise and it also cools down the whole thing. Get some secondary speakers because the ones built in, despite being Bang & Olufsen, apparently are very weak and also one of them failed. So I'd recommend getting them. Also get yourself a decent gaming headset. Personally, I quite like Razer. I find their software to be rather excellent. Uh, also be careful when you buy a system like this, um, it will, chances are it will have a lot of bloatware on it. I've had to remove things like Norton 360 and whatnot because they just slow the whole system down. Even though they've got a so-called gaming mode, it's really not worth uh, it's what it's called. Um, so for me personally, my software would be Afterburner, you can see down there. With this piece of software, you can overclock your GPU and you can even have it set so that if there's an issue, it resets to defaults. So I've got mine overclocked, as you can see, about 175 megahertz on each. Probably could go higher, but I haven't decided to yet. You need throttle stop, I've shown you that already. I like to use this piece of software, it's called Process Lasso. And some games, when you open them for the first time, uh, don't fully utilize the CPU cores. Um, and therefore you're left thinking, why is my frame rate so low? So you just open something like like this one for example and you can change the CPU affinity right now it's running on all so that's fine but you can set it with this to actually run on all the CPUs or if you've got something that is a bit hoggy you can set it to run on less CPUs so that it won't affect your performance I'd recommend Steam for obvious reasons everyone needs Steam on their system uh, Razer Central so Razer Synapse and is very useful if you've got something like this like a Razer mouse I find that to be a brilliant mouse, very comfortable to use. The software enables you to change loads of settings on it. And if you have Razer headset, you get THX spatial audio. 
I just use Windows security. Um, I haven't needed to use anything else. That's quite simple and easy to use. And some of the software that HP put on, I would just leave because it seems to break things if you take it off. So those are my pluses and minuses of using a system like this in 2023. Being a laptop, it will require some workarounds. I don't know why they don't design them so thin when they're almost exclusively going to be sat in your house. You're probably not going to take them out very much. They should really double the thickness on something like this, add much bigger, beefier fans, and just have the whole thing running a lot cooler. And then you wouldn't need to take it apart and replace the thermal paste and all this sort of thing. Um, but they don't seem to want to do that. They want to make it as thin as possible and um, unfortunately performance suffers. This CPU can go up to like four gigahertz, I think, um, but it never will because it will just overheat and shut down immediately. So it's a bit wasted performance there, really. Um, also, I should have mentioned earlier, this system only comes with eight gigabytes of memory and I had to update that to 16. Um, it comes with a single eight gigabyte stick, which is no good because that only gives you single channel performance instead of dual channel performance. So I had to stick in another 16 gigabyte stick which did improve the performance a lot and also makes windows a lot snappier so if you're buying this system i would consider doing all the things that i've said to do and you can actually have a good gaming experience in 2023 now will it game at 4k uh, not really i've hooked this up to my 4k tv and had a go at 4k and it won't really play particularly well in that mode as you can see, I've got a lot of games on here and they all run brilliantly in 1080p, which is what the monitor is on this device. You can't always hit 144 FPS and for some of the older games, you'll need to use um, software to make them widescreen and stuff, but that'd be the same on any computer you would use. Now, this is obviously in its base form more expensive than something like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. However, this is a lot more versatile. As you can see, you've got a full keyboard and you also have a trackpad. I don't use a trackpad personally, I prefer a mouse, but you could get this out of the box and basically play with it immediately. You don't need to buy anything else. So in terms of that, this is actually a good value proposition. And also you can obviously, being a laptop, move it around the house and play in a way where it's not disturbing other people. So in that way, it's actually a good value proposition. Um, certain games like Red Dead Redemption 2, you're gonna wanna run them with FSR on. Um, as this is a 1660 Ti card, not an RTX card, it doesn't have built-in DLSS uh, abilities. So if your game supports FSR, as Red Dead Redemption 2 does, it really does improve the frame rate massively. Um, I can go from about 60 frames per second up to about 90. Um, but I only need it to hit 60, because 60 is kind of the sweet spot for the most part. So you can then ramp the settings up a bit, get it to 60 locked, and it runs beautifully then. So if you're willing to do the little tips and tweaks that I've said to do, uh, this can be a good little system to have. There are thicker ones that are better perhaps, um, and there are thinner ones that are worse. Um, don't be tempted by their tales of maximum power um, because at the end of the day, there's only so much fan power you can get to cool these systems down. So if you follow the tips and tricks that I've said to get this system running at its best, you can have a good gaming experience out of this. And this system's probably about four years old now. And uh, apart from the overheating issues, which I fixed, I didn't really had any issues with it, aside from the little speaker problem. Um, it's a good system. It's got a ton of games that I've managed to install on there. Some of them have got little Windows weird things. For example, Assassin's Creed Origins, you open it, it runs like 30 FPS, close it, open it again, and it runs at like 100. Very strange, but that's not an issue with this laptop. That's just Windows being weird and Ubisoft not bothering to fully optimize their games. But being Windows, of course, you can play games from many different generations um, in high frame rates and the best graphic settings that just won't be available on th things like PlayStation 5 because it would take time for the developers to actually update these games and they're not going to spend the money, for example, on something like um, Fahrenheit or DSX Mankind Divided. They're just not going to bother. Whereas on the PC, you could play that at, say, 240 frames per second if you wanted to, if you have the hardware. So it's very worthwhile getting one of these, really, if you're looking for something that isn't immensely expensive and does a pretty good job. And also, it looks nice and gamery, but it's not really, really over the top. So I hope you found this video enjoyable and useful. I hope it um, inspires you to get into PC gaming. And uh, if it has, please go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, leave me a comment, 
subscribe, check out my Patreon if you really did enjoy this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.